This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Last night, I came across an Instagram post of a bunch of film cameras lined up all pretty, um, and it was mostly a page full of just like gear lust photographs. Now, that really inspired me, and I decided today I wanted to make some gear lust photographs similar to the ones that I saw on Instagram, but I want to record it. I want to show you guys my process, and not only do I want to kind of show you guys how I, you know, set up lighting and whatnot, but I want to also show you guys that you don't need anything fancy to do this. All you're gonna really need today is a camera, a lens that will focus somewhat close, if you have a macro lens, even better. But if you don't have another camera to photograph your camera with, your iPhone will do a great job as well. And the entire premise of this video, folks, is we're only gonna be using household items. So items that you can find in your house right now. That is the challenge. So here we go, folks. Let's go ahead and show you guys how I make these amazing gearless photographs with household items. Let's walk around really quick and let's see what I can use for this challenge. And the first thing that I think of is wood, different wood grains. A couple months back, I purchased this cutting board for the purpose of making these types of photographs. So here it is right here. It's this this large wooden cutting board for, uh, for meat stuff, but if you have a cutting board at home that's made out of wood already, you're good to go. So here we go, here is another cutting board, but a cutting board for sure, everybody has to have one of those in their household. So that is the first thing we're gonna be using. The second thing that usually comes to mind for me are solid colors, something that is just gonna act as a complete backdrop, like somebody taking photographs of a model. So I was looking around in the garage and I found this right here, folks, this blue construction type of paper that you can get from Walmart for literally like 25 cents. So this right here, folks, is gonna act as a backdrop for some of the gear photographs. Uh, and other than that, that is what we're gonna be using today. We're gonna be using the cutting board and we're gonna be using uh, a texture that's really smooth, just like that blue backdrop. Now in terms of photography gear, I will be shooting with the Fuji X-Pro2 and a 23mm f2 lens that I borrowed from a buddy of mine alongside with my iPhone. Now the most important thing when it comes to making gearless photographs is not the camera gear itself, but it's actually the lighting. And everybody in their house has a window. And folks, I'll be honest with you, window light is the best light for this type of photography. And the reason for that is because usually windows are gonna have some type of diffuser, like this here, or like the one in our living room. And that diffuser is just gonna give you this really kind of nice, soft, even light throughout. But if you are shooting in somewhere that doesn't have any type of window light or anything like that, if you have an umbrella light, or even something like a box light. Okay, so today we're gonna be photographing two different pieces of gear. And the first one, folks, is a brand new lens that I got for my Pentax 6.7. This one is the 55 millimeter F4, so the 28 millimeter equivalent for the 6.7. As you guys can see, man, it is a beauty. And then uh, the second thing we're gonna be photographing today is gonna to be my good trusty old Minolta X700 with the 45 millimeter f2. Now the reason why I chose these cameras are one because there's a little bit of a different way to shoot lenses than you would usually do it with camera bodies. Camera bodies you want to focus more on some of the specific features such as the shutter dial um, and just the little minuscule details and pull those out. Whereas lenses you want to get the coating and you want to make sure that the coating on top looks very very saturated and colorful. It draws more attention in. And that's kind of the secret behind making those photographs. And the way you do that is through the lighting, which we're about to talk about. And with that said, folks, I wanna take a quick break to thank our sponsor for this video, Squarespace. As a photographer with not a lot of knowledge on website building, I love Squarespace. There's no coding involved, and it's really easy to showcase your work through portfolios and galleries. Having a website now in 2020 is essential for any photographer, and it just overall makes you look more professional and more presentable to new clients. So if you guys want to get started with your own online website, Squarespace has partnered with me to give you guys 10% off of your first purchase of a website or domain. All you have to do is go to squarespace.com slash kingjapes, or enter the code KINGJAPES at checkout again for 10% off of your very first purchase. Big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video and let's move on over into actually making these gear lust photographs. So let's get started with a quick little setup of how 
this is going down. So the first thing that I did was I set this up on sort of this chair. Again, folks, we're using household items. And then we're using that wooden cutting board here as our first background. Now, something that I want to kind of point out is I'm going to be photographing looking towards the light. So I'm going to always make sure that I'm photographing against the light. And the reason for that, folks, is because when you photograph with the light, saying you're photographing this way rather than that way, when you photograph with the light, not only do you kind of block off the light source, but you also don't get to utilize the light's full effect on the gear. As you guys see from a top down angle here, the perspective, you're already seeing some of that nice color start to pop out of that lens. Now, if you were to just go down just a little bit more, you can see the hue of the lens start to change a little bit. And so you're gonna be photographing here from a 45 degree angle. And doesn't that just look good already? So this is great for B-roll, this is great for product photography, anything of that sort. I only shoot against the light, so I make sure the window is there. Now, luckily today, man, it's very gloomy outside, and so I don't really need to put the blinds up too much. It's pretty soft out, but if it were a sunny day and the light was pretty harsh, go ahead and close your blinds up, um, and it'll just make it a little bit softer for you to photograph with. Just some very basic, 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 basic photographs. Alright, so those photographs were very basic. All they really did was show the flare on the lens coating. Now, in order to kind of spice things up, you want to include some type of context to it and actually utilize some of that texture. So I'm going to grab the 6.7, I'm going to put some film around it, and then not only am I going to photograph from a 45 degree angle, I'm also going to shoot from the top down. Let's see how that changes this up. Just like that, by simply adding a couple of different elements in the frame, it just looks a little bit more dynamic. So that is something you want to keep in mind when you're making these photographs. Now I moved over to this darker table and I'm also using that window light. But as you guys see, I'm moving the plant around. And my idea with the plant is to not only add a splash of color, but a splash of texture and also just get a little bit of some framing and leading lines going on. So here's a quick preview of what I've got and here is the final result. So now we are on the blue backdrop. Same principle applies, but as you guys see, we are using my iPhone. I feel like it's just a little bit easier this way. you guys with a couple of closing thoughts and just a couple of more things to keep in mind when you're making product photographs or just gear lust photographs creativity is key here folks find different things to photograph with photograph with maybe a head of iceberg lettuce <laughs> some grapes whatever it may be in your house find something to photograph it with and just continue to push the envelope to what is possible. Truly unlock all of your creative potential just by experimenting with different things. You never know what the next big trend might be for these gearless photographs. It could be different woods, it can be different background colors, or it could be a head of lettuce, folks. It's all about experimenting. I wanna thank you guys for tuning in to another King James video, man, and I hope you guys truly enjoyed this. As always, folks, thank you again for checking it out. I'll see you in the next one. Middle to gang. Whew.